So in thinking about oxidation and reduction in chemistry, uh, there's a useful acronym, oil rig. Oxidation is loss, reduction is gain, uh, and that's referring to electrons. So if we have a hypothetical species, X2+, plus, and it loses electrons, that is oxidation. If X2 plus gains electrons, that's reduction. So the degree of oxidation in this case is being measured by the oxidation state, which is defined as the charge an atom might be imagined to have when the electrons are counted according to an agreed upon set of rules. First of which is that the oxidation state of a free element is zero. So dihydrogen, helium, lithium, dinitrogen, dioxygen, and so on, all oxidation state zero. For a simple monatomic iron, the oxidation state is equal to the net charge on the iron. So iron 2 plus has an oxidation state of plus 2, iron 3 plus has an oxidation state of plus 3, palladium 0 is 0, and so on. Generally, hydrogen has an oxidation state of plus 1, and oxygen has an oxidation state of minus 2. Uh, and this is how we can start to work out the oxidation state of organic molecules. The sum of all oxidation states must equal the charge on the iron, or zero if neutral. So, here's an example of some nitrogen compounds. So we're going to measure the oxidation state of the nitrogen that's indicated in red. Now this nitrogen in ammonia is attached to three hydrogens, all of which have an oxidation state of plus one. The overall molecule is neutral. The sum of all oxidation states must equal the charge, or zero if neutral. So in order to balance out all of these plus one charges, we need an overall uh, oxidation state of minus 3. Therefore, the oxidation state of this nitrogen is minus 3. If we move to hydrazine, we've now substituted one of our hydrogens for a nitrogen. So our other two hydrogens still contribute uh, overall charges of plus 1. Our nitrogen contributes uh, 0, because it's we're thinking about it in the same way as uh, the oxidation state of a free element. So a nitrogen-nitrogen bond, for instance. So as a result, in order to balance these two positive charges, we need an oxidation state of minus 2. So the oxidation state of this nitrogen is minus 2. If we move to this guy, we have plus 1, and we have minus 2 now. So in order to balance that out, the oxidation state of nitrogen must be plus 1. In this case, it's plus 3. Over here, it's 0, because this is dinitrogen. In this molecule, it's minus 1. In this molecule, it's plus 4 and in this molecule it's plus 5. So already we can see that just using nitrogen compounds there are a range of different oxidation states that you can get. Now this only gets worse with carbon because carbon can make four bonds in a neutral molecule whereas nitrogen can only make three. So actually if we start doing oxidation state for carbon we find that methane has minus four but if we move to substituted uh, alkanes the oxidation state changes because we've now got carbon-carbon bonds as opposed to just carbon-hydrogen. So these go from minus three to minus two. We start to then incorporate things like alcohols. Uh, minus one incorporates things like uh, alkenes and alkynes. Zero, plus one, plus two, plus three, and plus four where we've got four bonds to things like oxygen. So it's become incredibly complicated already using oxidation state. And as a result, organic chemists tend not to use oxidation state for organic molecules. What we use instead is a slightly simplified system called oxidation level. Um, and this is for measuring the, the level of oxidation at carbon atoms. So we work out the oxidation level of a carbon atom by uh, counting the number of bonds from that carbon atom, two atoms which are more electronegative than carbon, plus the number of pi bonds to other carbon atoms. So the highest oxidation level we can achieve is oxidation level 4. That's where our carbon atom is making four bonds to atoms which are more electronegative than carbon. And we give that the informal name the CO2 level, because CO2 is the, the simplest example where this happens. But it also includes things like phosgene, um, tetrahalides like carbon tetrabromide, uh, ureas and carbonates and things like that. Anything where carbon is making four bonds to atoms more electronegative than carbon. If we drop down an oxidation level uh, to three, we're now in the carboxylic acid level and we can see that our carbon atom now is only making three bonds to atoms which are more electronegative than carbon in this carboxylic acid example. So this also includes things like acid halides, esters, amides, uh, trihalides like chloroform, uh, but also nitriles. 
If we drop down again, this is now called the ketone level because our carbon is making two bonds to atoms that are more electronegative than carbon. So it includes ketones, aldehydes, uh, also acetals, uh, dihalides like dichloromethane. But now we start to incorporate carbon-carbon um, multiple bonds. So in this case we have an enol because we're forming one bond to an atom which is more electronegative than carbon and one pi bond to another carbon atom. But also alkynes fit into this category as well because we're forming two pi bonds to another carbon atom. If we drop down again, we're down the alcohol level, so this is where we're forming one bond. So this includes things like alcohols, uh, amines, but also alkenes, because now in these cases we're forming one bond to an atom which is more electronegative than carbon. In this case we're forming one pi bond to another carbon atom. Uh, this also includes uh, ethers and monohalides. And if we drop right down to the bottom, we get to oxidation level zero, which is the alkane level. Uh, and this includes simple alkanes, branched alkanes, um, and uh, compounds where carbon is forming a bond to something which is more um, electropositive than carbon. So boron in this case, or silicon. If we move up in oxidation level, that is oxidation. So oxidation is an increase in OL. And reduction is a drop in oxidation level. So this actually works opposite to oil rig, where we said that you know oxidation is loss. Uh, actually, in this case, an increase in oxidation level is uh, oxidation, and a drop in oxidation level is reduction. So let's see an example of this in action. Uh, this is a reaction of benzaldehyde going to benzyl alcohol. So if we look at this carbon atom here, which is where the reaction is occurring, the oxidation level of this is 2. It's in the ketone oxidation level because it's forming two bonds to the oxygen, which is more electronegative than carbon. If we look at the, uh, the equivalent atom in the product, we can see now that it's only forming one bond to uh, an atom which is more electronegative than carbon. So our oxidation level has dropped to 1. Since this is a drop in oxidation level, this is a reduction. And now if we look at another example, here we have benzyl alcohol, uh, which is reacting to form benzaldehyde and then benzoic acid. So starting out with our, this is the product of the previous reaction, we know that the oxidation level is 1 because it's forming one bond to oxygen. We're moving across here to a molecule where this carbon atom is forming two bonds to oxygen, so our oxidation level has increased to 2. As a result, this is an oxidation because we've gone up from 1 to 2 in oxidation level. And if we look at the oxidation level of our, uh, the equivalent atom in our final compound, we know that that's three because we have one, two, three bonds to atoms which are more electronegative than carbon. And this is also an oxidation. And this entire process is called the Jones oxidation.